What's up everybody, Sam Smyers here. Today I wanna to go over how to use Soothe 2. Now I know there's a few tutorials already online about how to use this plugin, but some people ask me to do a overview and a walkthrough about how to use it. So I'm gonna go through it and hopefully show you some things that you might not have known about how to use this plugin. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And also please go ahead and like this video. Soothe 2 is a dynamic resonance suppressor. So what exactly does that mean? Basically, it will find the resonances in your audio and then suppress them or take them down. And it does this automatically and pretty intuitively, so it's pretty cool. Let's think about a dynamic EQ, like a Pro Q3 by Fab Filter. I could find a resonant frequency and then set a band where that frequency is and then make that band dynamic so that anytime that frequency gets a bit too high for me, then I can have it automatically pull it down. But with a dynamic EQ, that band is going to be static. It's not gonna move along with the audio. Let's say I have a singer that is singing and at one part of the song, there's one frequency that I think is too resonant. And then at another part of the song, there's another frequency that is too resonant. I would have to set two bands in two different places to actually control those resonances. But with Sooth 2, it automatically finds those resonances. So it is a very useful tool, especially for vocals. I have the Sooth 2 loaded up on some vocals. So let me go ahead and play you the vocals with the Sooth 2 on them. Motive, motive, motive now, as you see these little bands being pulled down, that is the amount of processing that is happening. So for this band, if I raise this up, then that changes the sensitivity. So this can take down the sensitivity or increase it. And that just means that that is the amount of processing that is applied to that area. So I can also hit option on my keyboard and I can listen to those frequencies. And that might help me find where those resonances are. And basically you have some options for changing your bands. You have your bell, you have your band shelf, high shelf, low shelf, things like that. You have your cue. So I can change the slope, the sensitivity, which I showed you, the frequency here, and then we have the balance. So this is going to be in stereo mode. I could just have the processing applied to the right side. So I would just change the balance to be only right or to the left, only left, because I have this in left and right mode. I can change it to mid and side, and then I have the option to change it to just the sides or just the mid, things like that. So that's kind of a cool little thing you can do with the balance here. So when I hit option on my keyboard, that allows me to actually hear the delta, which is going to be the sound that is being removed or the resonances that is being removed. And you can also just turn this on here. Instead of just hitting option on your keyboard. If I right click on one of these little dots here, then I can listen, which is what I did when I hit option or I can enable it or disable it. So if I click on it, it disables it and then I can enable it. And I can basically do that for any of these little dots here. And I can play around with them, drag them back and forth. Motive, motive, motive now. And then down here, we have the size of the plugin so I can make it a lot larger. I'm just gonna put it at medium for now. So let's go ahead and go to the left side here. Basically you have soft and hard. Soft is going to be a bit more transparent. These are just going to be the processing modes. Hard is going to be a bit less transparent. It's going to be more noticeable. So it's going to have a more drastic effect on your audio. And then depth is basically the amount of processing that is happening. So let's go ahead and listen to soft on the vocals. Motive, motive, motive now. And now let's go ahead and switch it to hard. Now, obviously there's a huge difference when I switch it to hard. They recommend that you start with soft because that should basically cover everything that you need to do. But if you do want to have more drastic control and then you can switch it to hard, but then you'll get some artifacts if you start really pushing this plugin. So maybe something like this would be good for these vocals. And I can listen to the Delta here. Then we've got the sharpness and the selectivity. So sharpness is basically like the cue or the slopes of each of the little cuts. So watch when I increase the sharpness and play the vocals. Motive, motive, motive now. I can see you. you can see how sharp those little cuts start to get. And then we have selectivity, which means that if I increase it, then it's going to really focus in on where those resonances are 
And then if I decrease it, then I'll be a little bit less selective. So the sharpness and the selectivity basically work hand in hand with each other. Motive, motive, motive now. I can see your motive. And then we have the stereo mode, which I went through a little bit earlier. So you have the balance down here. I can change it to left and right or mid and side. Let's talk about what link means. If I decrease this down to 0%, then that means that the left and the right channels are 0% linked together. If I increase it to 100%, then they are 100% linked together. So the processing of Sooth 2 will be applied to both channels equally at 100%, and then at 0%, the processing will be applied independently of each other. So if there is a lot of resonances on a stereo signal from your left channel, and I have it at 0% link, then it will only be applied to the left channel. If I have it at 100%, then the processing will be applied to both channels, even if there is more resonances out of your left channel only. This might be useful if you have something like a drum top loop where you have some sharp shakers in one of the channels, like the left channel, and you only want to take down some of the resonances of some of those shakers or some of those percussions, then you could maybe play around with this. But for the most part, you could just sit with this 100%. I think that should be fine. Then of course you have your attack and release. So these are basically what you would find on any kind of compressor. Motive, motive, motive now. I can see your motive. So you can see whenever I increase that release all the way up, these little bands here start to get really slow with how they respond to the audio. And then you have your quality options. Basically, you probably do want to have oversampling at least 2x or 4x depending on how complex the actual source material is. The cool thing is with this plugin is you have an option for offline. So I could have my offline at four times and then I could set my real time oversampling at one times so that when I'm actually mixing my song, the CPU isn't going super crazy. But when I bounce it down, then it will have the high quality oversampling applied to it. And then you also have this option for the resolution and basically for resolution, the more complex the source audio, if your audio has a lot of transients in it, like if I put this Sooth 2 on a bus or like a master bus or like a drum bus and there's a lot of transients going on, then I would probably want to use something like a higher resolution. And you can do the same thing here. You can have the high resolution be applied offline or have it be the same like real time. So I'm just going to do same as real time for now. I'm reading now how Oak Sound explains what resolution does. Resolution adjusts the refresh rate of the resonance detection and filter updates. This results in a smoother time domain response. Higher settings can be especially useful with complex materials such as on a bus or when processing materials with lots of transients such as drums. So I guess you just have to play around with this to see how it sounds because that's a little confusing as to what that means exactly. So yeah, if you have this on a bus then you probably do want to use something a bit higher than normal. Down here you have your sidechain options, and this is cool because I could go to my instrument bus and set the sidechain to something like the vocals, and now the vocals are going to be triggering the Sooth 2 on my instruments. I can see your so if I hit that little headphone button, then I can hear the sidechain input. And if I hit the on button, now it's using the vocals to trigger the Sooth 2. So let's just make this all the way up the depth, make this kind of drastic. And essentially what you would be doing is creating some space for the vocals and the instruments together. So let's go ahead and listen to the vocals and instruments together. So that might be another tool for you to use to be able to carve out some room from your mix for those vocals. Now going back to the vocals here, I have the output mix. You can change your trim here. Just zero is going to be good. And usually I'll just keep the mix at 100%. And then you have the delta and bypass down here. And if I click on this little thing, this just pops up this little menu down here. And we've got the headphones down here. I can just click on this to turn on the delta again. The last thing I want to go over is of course the presets. I definitely think that you should check out the presets and see what they are doing. Um, you have some options from some producers, some mix engineers. 
So maybe I want to use this Vox 3 by Josh Goodwin. I can click it, turn it on, and see what he's doing for vocals. And let's go ahead and play the vocals here. Motive, motive, motive now I can see your motive. I find that starting with presets is a good way to get an understanding of the plugin settings that people use. So if I can just see what they're doing here, and I can look at the quality here, I can look at the mix. So there's all these different things going on with these presets, and then that might help me get some ideas on how to use the plugin. For example, let me go ahead and play you some guitars here. And I could go through my presets here. We've got some guitars, acoustic guitar, that's an acoustic guitar bright guitar, so maybe I'll hit this bright guitar and then I can listen to how it affects the sound. So the mix is at 50%, let me put that to 100%. And ultimately, the way that I use this is going to depend how those guitars sit in the mix, and that will really help me identify what frequencies I think are too resonant. You could even use a Sooth 2 on a drum bus. And let me go through the presets. Let's go through drums here, and maybe I want to put this one on for the harsh hi-hat. And then we can see some of the frequencies it's taking out and I can actually just hear the hi-hat there when I turn on this delta. And then let's go ahead and adjust this depth. And maybe I could do something like that if I felt like the hi-hats were a bit too sharp. The final thing that I wanna say about Sooth 2 is that resonances are not necessarily a bad thing. If you have a Sooth 2 on all of your tracks and you're removing all of the resonances, then your entire track will just start to sound flat. Your entire song will kind of sound flat. So in order to have things punch out and to poke out in the mix, you do want resonances in some places. Ultimately, what this tool is used for is to really maintain those resonances so that some things don't stick out a little bit too much. And especially for more dynamic material like vocals, I find the Sooth 2 really helpful. So if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give a like and also please consider subscribing to my channel. If you do want to improve your mixing skills, then check out my Modern Mix Academy. This is going to be a full online mixing course that I created that will help you make some of the best mixes of your life from the comfort of your own home. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.